Hey YouTubers, Facebookers and Instagrammers. So I'm here today, gonna to chat a little bit about my puppy leads. Uh, recently I had a lot of questions, people sending me DMs, private messages, asking me, you know, could they buy one of my training leads? It's not something I intentionally uh, ever made to sell on to the public, but with a lot of people asking me, I decided to start uh, producing these in a small quantity. I think sometimes people think that there's something magic about this lead. It's not magic, but I've ergonomically made it to fit the criteria of how I teach. So in the beginning stages, when I work with my clients, the first thing I'm trying to do is establish a correct length for a lead. And so the way that my leads are designed is that there are different points through the lead that you can uh, put your hand through to hold a fixed point. Most leads are quite long, and when people first show me their dog, they're holding the lead in a different place every single time. Now at the beginning, I'm trying to establish early on when people first put a lead on, I start most of my lead work with my online clients around 13 weeks old, 13, 14 weeks, which is quite early, but that's because I find that most people want to sort of crack on at that point. I would normally personally often wait a little bit longer, but 13 weeks or there or thereabouts is about the right time. In the early stages, we're just looking to get the dog walking in some sort of competent fashion on my left hand side. And that'll be working towards, believe it or not, the dog actually pulling. But there's normally two or three weeks of training at the beginning there that the dog, you know, can tend to be all over the place. I often say it's a bit like flying a kite on a windy day. Often those first sessions are only one, two minutes long. We're just trying to get the dog used to being on the lead. Now, the first thing, as I said, in that first two to three weeks, what I'm looking to do, and I'm gonna show you now with one of my leads here, is establish for that person and the dog's height, a correct point for them to hold the lead. So what you'll notice here is it's like a traditional SIP lead. So there's a loop at one end there, which goes, which sorry, there's a ring at one end there, which is gonna obviously go over the dog's head. And there's a correct way for that to go on, by the way. And I'm gonna show you now. So if you look here, the lead should always come in from the left hand side okay from this side here as i look at the lead okay basically when the dog is on your left hand side the lead will be able to tighten and loosen tighten and loosen the other way around and the lead would only tighten and not loosen that only works when you walk the dog on the same side each time and that you put the lead on the same way so as i look at the dog i put the lead over my right hand and it should be able to tighten and loosen. So the lead is coming in from the left side. I then put my hand over the dog's muzzle, pull the lead over the top, and now the lead will be on the correct side. Now what you'll notice here is there's a collection of loops up through here. Now I, when I sell these, I don't make the knots too tight to start with so that people can move them. But to give you an example, I might be looking to put two fingers on my first hand through that loop. Now when I'm, my clients are sending me their footage, in that first couple of weeks, I'm trying to establish which of those loops is the correct one for them to hold. Once we've established which is the correct one, and that would be based off if the dog was at a perfect heel position and my arm is relaxed by my side, there should be a reasonable amount of slack in the lead. Okay, so if you can imagine that was on the dog's neck, I would be looking for some slack a bit like that. If the line is tight, um, then that would be incorrect. Now the likelihood is the line will be tight at the beginning because the dog will likely be ahead or behind, okay? But we'll be just looking to find that moment when the dog is momentarily by our side in the perfect position, our arm is relaxed by our side and we now know that that is the correct loop or that one or whatever. And that's what we do at the beginning. We figure out which is the correct loop. So once we know which it's the, uh, the correct loop that they're holding, they always hold the same place. And now that's a fixed variable I don't have to worry about. I know that they are holding the lead in the right position every single time. There's also no excess lead. A lot of the time people come out and they're holding the lead like this in both hands. Uh -uh. Just your left hand is gonna do the work. Your right hand is free for other stuff, encouraging along. Um, it, later on, we'll be holding your gun, all sorts of different things. Okay, so as I said, there's nothing magical about the lead in the sense that it's gonna make your dog walk perfectly. It's not. 
but the first stage is establishing the correct length to walk the dog on. And most leads are just super long and they're just straight through. So I find that clients are holding the lead in a different place every single time. And when I'm watching that back on film, it's very difficult for me to tell proportionally where the dog is. But once they know they're holding the correct loop, then they can crack on and we don't have to worry about that element. And we then work through the next phases to come. So in the early stages, it's just about stabbing, which is the correct loop, getting the dog confident on the lead. Once the dog is confident on the lead, then we drop the dog back to heel. Uh, and then we move forwards from there. And also this lead, I only tend to use in the early stages. Once the dogs get beyond about six or eight kilos, if I haven't got them walking nicely by then, I'll often go to another lead after this. The point of this line being quite small at the beginning is that if you put a traditional slip lead on, they tend to be quite thick and they're not very supple. So normally once I get to an adult age, I will then go on to a more adult type of lead that I tend to make as well. Oh, you'll see in most of my videos, um, I'm always using these super thin leads at the beginning, but they're when the puppies are quite small, I find out ergonomically again, they work at the sort of optimum position then. So just to let you know later on, beyond, once they go beyond a certain weight, generally, if you haven't got on top of the dog, I will use with these with older dogs. You'll see me a lot of the time doing retrieve work with them on, uh, a similar design to this, but they are different. And that's so that it, I'm always in control of the dog. I have a bit of a saying, which is left hand lead or right hand retrieve. So when my dog comes back with a retrieve, I'll put my left hand onto the lead, which stabilizes the dog. And then I take with my right hand, I can step forward and the dog is immediately back at heel rather than the dog doing two laps of you after you've taken the retrieval of it before you get control of it again. Anyway, I hope that's been a good explanation of how my leads work. As I said, there's nothing magical as far as making the dog walk to heel, but it's about ergonomics and getting the dog, uh, sorry, getting your hand in the correct position every time moving forwards to make that lead training come along later on. If you're looking for some help with online um, support and training, which is what makes up most of my work these days, then just uh, drop me a, a message on my Facebook page, Hampshire Spaniel Training. We also have another page, Spaniel Training Kit. You can find us on Instagram. Instagram and Facebook and that's where I am selling these products if you want them along with a host of other things like dummies and bowls and dog jackets as well so don't forget to give me a like and a follow it would be much appreciated and we'll catch you later guys cheers